Well, I, uh, as Russ said, I am an undertaker. And the thing I have noticed over the years is that people have an expectation of you when you're in that business. They think that maybe you forget about the human factor, that maybe it's just an everyday thing, that just someone else has gone on their way and we're here just to do a job. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. Um, one of the things that I have done for myself that I promised myself a long time ago I would eventually do is to finally publish the poetry I've been writing over the last 20 years of my life. And this is actually one of the poems from that book. Um, it's hopefully, if all goes well, going to be out beginning of summer. And we'll go on from that. But this I actually wrote about how I view my job and how I really see some of the things that we experience when we lose somebody. And I hope it makes sense to you. It's called True of Self. Happiness is a false model of pleasure and that the mask of self is left intact to preserve and protect. Our gossamer veil of euphoria shifts shape to suit. We don the mantle that is most pleasing and secure. Sadness is the curtain wall of our fortress, a mute barrier to the world, and we, stoutly defying passage, peer through the crenellations as we care to choose. Anger is the child of our being, rash and aggrandizing in its quest for self-fulfillment. Defiant of all save the means to satiate the hunger of the moment, raving, consuming in its fury to dominate the mind. Contentment is the mirror of our life, reflecting only the surroundings, not the self. Expressionless, deflective, see how the gilded trappings shadow the core, the temporary state of false chastity. We wander through this life wearing masks of many colors, Adorned in garments of many weaves and patterns, our raiment of words, expressions, gestures, and deeds serves as disguise. Deep inside hides the form that we deem unfit to reign. The true self is forced to skulk in the gloom. It seems that all our lives are dedicated thus to the role of chameleon, to reflect, to deflect, to mimic and parade what seems safe. Yet inside our self does slowly perish, suffocating on the suppression that we enforce. The innocent, beautiful nature of our potential seems doomed to oblivion. One begins to think that man is little more than a troop of crafty mummers. Until the clandestine self is exposed in a moment of purity, a companion has crossed the veil and is lost to this world. The agony of loss, the frigid ache of grief, the burning of tears, these hold true to their melancholy form, and in their mercy, all our trappings come undone. Walls and battlements crumble to the earth, our mirrors are shattered to shimmering dust, and our self stands as it was born, blind, lost, afraid. Devoid of barriers, it must stand exposed in the maelstrom. Yet in this time of fear, confusion reveals an event of note. Death has been the larcenist and at once our greatest benefactor. For in death lies a sublime beauty to behold, not in the event, but in those that ensue. Exposed in our delicate vulnerability, a moment of rarity manifests. Our self becomes again free. And as the fear of self submits to the fury of grief, our timidity is replaced by beatific awe. We have stood always with kindred souls. In the fury of such heartache, we allow this self, the true self, to emerge. And with sublime courage, our acceptance endows its commiserate aspect. Love. Affection in the lost for the lost. Compassion in the ally as the guide. In this crisis of the heart, we become the best of ourselves. If only we had the valor to remain. Yet hope remains that one day we will tame the fear that debases ourself and bring forth the majestic being to command. 
But until that time, I will continue to marvel through the tears, through the pain, through the sorrow, at the glimpse of that promise that this moment of truth reveals the best of ourself that lies dormant within. For even the blind can see the greatest measure of our grief describes the equal measure of our love. Thank you.